Hello and welcome to the Pear Blossom Press YouTube channel. My name is Lynn and today I am going to use the Halo Light Combo Set and from that combo I'm actually using the Halo Light itself because in the combo it's great value for many because you actually get two Halo Lights and then you also get four singles. So it's really fabulous. You're getting six lights in total with um, that pack and it's nice to have a variety. So I am crafting with, this is a um, die set from La La Land Crafts and I'll be crafting with these goodies a little bit later, um, just a few days later from when this video is going live. So if you're catching this when it first comes out, then uh, keep your eyes peeled on Instagram because there's going to be a collaboration hop between Pear Blossom Press and La La Land Crafts. And they sent me a lot of goodies, so I wanted to uh, craft with um, this die set. And uh, I think for my Instagram hop, I'll be crafting with the stamp set. So do check out La La Land Crafts, lots of fun, fun uh, craft stamps and dies available on their website. This in particular I thought was super adorable. It's this haunted house which is really fabulous. It's a nice size. You can actually see once I get this on top of my card front that it's pretty substantial. It takes up a good portion of your card front and what I've done is on some, uh, I actually used watercolor paper because I had some leftover from that background that I created, which was done completely with sprays. So I used the um, Imagine Crafts firework sprays, which are fabulous. They have a nice um, shimmer to them with that bit of mica that's included. And I spritzed, I think, a couple of different shades of blue, one shade of purple, and then I gave it a very light misting of the um, black fireworks. And that's it. I just let it dry. And I ended up with this gorgeous night sky panel here. So I had some leftover watercolor cardstock from that and I did a little bit of ink blending to create my haunted house here. So I just pulled out some various shades of purple in my um, Versamagic inks, which I really like because they have a bit of a chalky finish and I find that it blends really smoothly. I've backed these window openings with a bit of vellum that I used an alcohol marker to color with um, yellow so that it kind of looks like maybe the lights are on inside the house. Pear Blossom Press does have some colored vellum so if you don't have alcohol markers which are important if you're going to do a technique like this because alcohol ink is transparent so you can still see through that vellum and it still has that effect of um appearing like it's um kind of like light you know that's shining through a glass window so if you don't have alcohol inks or alcohol markers, then you can always get colored vellum and that's available at Pear Blossom Press. It's actually a very generous pack. You can get a multicolor pack for not a lot of money and it's already cut down to size too. So this is what the halo light looks like. It's a ring of five lights that are on this metal um, unit here, which comes included with the battery holder. And of course, all of the Pear Blossom Press lights do come with the battery. So you've got everything you need. This is one of the easiest uh, lights to install because basically all you need to do is glue it down. <laughs> That's pretty much it. So what I'm going to do is I did ink up another panel that is going to be a little bit of a um, my full moon, which I thought would be really fun um, to put behind my haunted house. So I think it's going to look fun even when this is not lit up, but then I'm going to use the halo light as a way to make the moon glow a little bit. And for the uh, panel that I have die cut the circle of the moon out, all I did with that one was I gave it a light spritz of London Fog 
which is a fireworks spray that's sort of gray, grayish blue. It's very cool tone gray. And then I did some extra ink blending again with some Versa Magic inks. And I used some uh, white, which sounds odd, but that helps to just tone everything down so that I don't get too many harsh colors because I was using some grays and a touch of yellow in the moon just to give it some color variation along with those splatters of that London Fog Firework Spray. So that I did in advance so that it could dry and I die cut a circle that is going to be larger than the uh, aperture of the halo ring and that way it completely covers uh, the ring and what I'm going to do is position my um, night sky panel do a little bit of a dry fitting so that I have an idea for the composition I want and this um, haunted house was feeling a little bit delicate because you can see there's a lot of little details which I absolutely love. So I did die cut it a second time just to add a little bit more uh, sturdiness to the back of this and that's going to get positioned onto my card front with the moon behind it. And now I need to figure out where I want to um, put my light and where I need to stamp the sentiment, where the push button should be, all of that good stuff. So I don't want to glue anything down just yet. I still want to figure out the position of everything. Now I happen to have a circle die that is about the same size as the aperture of the halo light. And so I've already gone ahead and um, uh, pick that one out so that I can die cut a hole through this night sky panel because this is thick watercolor cardstock and the light is not going to be able to shine through both that layer and the layer of the moon. So by cutting through it, it kind of helps to um, allow that light to shine through a little bit better. And now I can start to really position everything and um, figure out where to stamp both my sentiment as well as the push word, which I used from the Pear Blossom Press um, action stamps. And that way, um, before I glue anything down, before I put foam adhesive onto anything, I wanna make sure that I have stamped onto this panel before it gets too dimensional. While it's nice and flat, I'm still gonna be able to stamp on it and get a nice clear impression. So I've left a little bit of um, my haunted house here. I wiped off some of the glue so that I could still tuck the moon behind it. And I just traced through that opening so I know exactly where my um, halo light needs to be glued down onto the card base. And once I have that position figured out, then I can actually glue, and all you need to do to attach that um, halo light is to just glue it down. So I'm going to actually uh, glue that directly onto my card, uh, well not my card base, because I did put a layer of black cardstock down first, so that that frames my whole scene a little bit. And I thought about uh, different, um, adding another layer of cardstock behind the moon. I, you saw me pull out some yellow cardstock just to help add like a more yellowish tint to the uh, light, which I'm not sure exactly if I'm going to do. So that's why I set it off to the side and uh, decided to work on stamping out my sentiment. So since everything is really you know, kind of close to done. I definitely want to make sure that my stamping is uh, spot on. So I'm going to use my stamp positioning tool and I wanted to curve this san sentiment, which is happy haunting around the moon. So all I did was I just put it onto um, where I wanted it, the sentiment to start and picked it up with um, the door of my stamp positioning tool and then just started to kind of curve it and I kept opening and closing that door just to see if I was getting the curve to match that uh, curve of the moon. 
and you can just keep futzing with it, nudge it around, and because this is a short sentiment, it's really easy to, to add that bit of curvature. It doesn't hurt your stamp at all. Once you peel it off, it's going to uh, bounce right back to its original state. I happen to stamp with some of my uh, Versamagic ink in cloud white because I still happen to have it on my desk. But it's a nice pigment ink. Really, you could use any pigment ink. You don't necessarily have to always use your clear um, Versamark ink if you don't want. Also, I do tend to like, if I am um, white heat embossing onto something dark, I do tend to like stamping in some kind of a white pigment ink because I feel like that helps it to be brighter white. And so I poured my um, fine uh, white embossing powder and I did heat set that. Now I'm going to add the world's best foam behind my panel here. So you definitely need a foam that's going to be thick enough so that it has enough room for your battery and battery holder. And I just pulled out an extra halo light so that I know as I'm putting my foam behind this panel where I can safely put foam because you don't want to have any foam where the battery holder is or where the light unit is itself. So by just having an extra one, I can kind of position it where I know it's going to be and then that way I can get some foam safely around it and have enough support behind this panel while still not obstructing the um, the light unit itself. And that's really as simple as it is. So once I get this into position, I'm going to make sure that everything looks the way that I want it to look. It's a little bit bright, so I wanted to see how this looks with the yellow. And you can see it definitely turns it a little bit yellow, but I didn't actually like the look of that. So I'm going to keep it and what I decided to do, in fact, was one layer of the world's best foam is definitely enough to give you clearance for um, this light unit. But I actually wanted the panel to be a little bit further away, so I doubled up on this foam anyways. That way the light feels a little bit more diffused. I put a, um, You could put a little bit of... Um, vellum behind there as well that helps also and so just depending on the look and how bright you want the light to be um, you can play around with the distance of um, your panel and how far away it is from the lights but i i felt like doubling up on the foam really helps it to kind of um you know kind of makes it a little bit less bright because i didn't want it too too bright so here's a final look at my card. I think it's a lot of fun. I love this uh, die set from La La Land Crafts. Now uh, be sure to be on the lookout on Instagram because in a couple days we're going to have a collaboration hop between both Pear Blossom Press and La La Land Crafts. Thanks again and until next time, happy crafting and have a fabulous day. Bye!